Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet uh, you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, we're just thanking Him for this time that we have, thanking Him for what He's done in our day, thanking Him for what He's revealed to us. And it's, it was to us. It, it was not going to be uh, to the world. Uh, people have got this notion that he come to save the world. Well, I got news for you. He did not come to save the world. He couldn't save the world. Uh, <clears throat> this world is a, is a product, and it's come right down to where <clears throat> the prophet called it Satan's Eden. So everything you see around here is a it's a product of Satan's Eden, the people, their attitudes, their desires, and everything is mostly all from Satan. And then you got a, a small few people here and there that's pushed off to one side that everybody thinks they uh, have lost their mind, which they did. They lost theirs and got the mind of Christ. And so they think that these people are weird or crazy. But... Uh, that's just how it's going to be. So if you want to be a friend of the world, you cannot be a friend of Christ. He come to save his people from their sins and his people was the one that he foreknew before the foundation of the world. He put their name on his book and that's it. And so if your name is there, there's no way you can miss it. If your name is there, there's no way that you can get it. You'll go on, you'll be a good person, you'll be a religious person, you'll do all these things without one ray of hope. So we thank the Lord that He's included us in this great thing for this end time. Brother Ram said this was a thing that all the prophets and sages and everything else, when they looked down through the the, the channels of time. They said, oh, this is what we want to see. Well, glory to God, we're here. And we're able to see it. And we thank the Lord for that. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you once again. Lord, we're so grateful to be a part of what you're doing in this day. And Lord, we know that what we're doing is in the Word of God, Lord that you sent your word for each and every day when the people would be living on the earth. And Lord, that's been no different this day. You have sent a word, a message by a messenger, Lord, and we have received it. We believe it and we thank you for it. And we believe that the message and the messenger is one. How could the message be of God if God didn't vindicate the messenger? And Lord, you have truly, truly done that. So Lord, we thank you that our eyes are open, that we got ears to hear what the Spirit has said to us. And we thank you for that. And we ask you, Lord, to continue to reveal and open yourself to us. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, today I want to take a little subject. And uh, to give this a title, What Must I Do to Be Saved? What Must I Do to Be Saved? And that's a question. And so, uh, and that question is going to be uh, answered. But, you know, <clears throat> I was, was thinking, I read something the other day and it kind of uh, just set, set this off in my mind. But you know, most churches preach what will take you to heaven. They preach what they think will take you to heaven. But most, don't. now this here, so they're, they're preaching, they're trying to get everybody to heaven. They say, well, you, you come join us and we'll put your name on our book and you know, you'll be a good person and, and blah, blah, blah. And uh, 
And that's, that's it, you know, just come, come, come and jine, that's it. But, you know, so they teach all those things. So they, they're teaching the people supposedly how to get to heaven. But they don't preach what will keep you out of heaven. So they're trying to get them there, but they don't tell them the things. So look here, if you do this, you're not going. If you do this, there's no way for you to make it. So they're only, like a fellow said one time, I don't care how thin you slice the meat, there's two sides to it. And so normally, if you was to listen to these guys, they only get, oh, they're so sweet and they're so lovable and they're, they're petting the people and oh yeah. So they only give them one side. And the side they give them is not even the correct side. You have to give them Jesus Christ, the Word. So that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. But with all of that, that's what the, the nominal modern church is. That's all they want to do is they try to get somebody to heaven. But you know, Brother Branham preached the full gospel. He told us how to get to heaven, and he told us what would keep us out of heaven. But you know, no matter how much he told it over and over and over again, even in the last part of his ministry when it had been so vindicated by God that anybody that had any spiritual whatsoever could identify that no man could do these things except God be with him. And even the ministers agreed to that. But when he told them the truth, they wouldn't accept it. He said, you know, I've crossed this nation back in two, back in two, and I've told you women about cutting your hair and wearing these clothes and all these things. And he said, every time I come back, it's more than ever. Well, so, but you know, the predestinated got it. That's the ones he was after, the predestinated. Now, I want to read in Acts chapter 16, and we want to pick this up at verse 25. And if you, you need to go back and maybe read the whole chapter and, and get the whole picture, but this is where Paul, he's on his uh, missionary trip, him and Silas, and they went over uh, what we would call now uh, Europe, and they're making a tour, and they were in uh, Philippi, and they was like they normally would. They would preach and so on. And this little woman, who had a spirit on her, got to follow them around and said, "These men are of the Most High God." And so this went on. And finally, one day, Paul he got enough of them, and he said, "Spirit, get out of her," and it did. And the people that were promoting her, they were making money off of her suit saying, well, it really, it, that was like a slap in their face and they caused a great tumult. But anyway, the, the whole thing winds up, Paul and Silas are in jail and that's where we pick it up. So in Acts 16.25, now, They've been put in jail, and of course, I guess back in them days, when you got in jail, right off the bat, they must have, they must have put a whipping on you. So anyway, they're in jail, and here we want to pick it up. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Now that's the way, that's the Christian spirit. They went over there, oh, 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 wow, wow, and you know, we come over here to preach the gospel, and here we are, they whipped us and put us in jail. Well, come to find out, they were in jail for a purpose, because they had to meet somebody, and he was the jailer. And he said, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. And the prisoner, they would know their 
Look, at they was praying and singing praises, and it was so loud that the other prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there came a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and every one's bands were loosed. Well, that was some kind of earthquake, wasn't it? And the keeper of the prison, awaking, awakening out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and he sprang in and came trembling <clears throat> and fell down before Paul and Silas and, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Boy, well, that earthquake really had to stir this old fellow up. I mean, evidently, something has happened to him. How accurate he knew he was even lost. Well, you know, if you really think about it, you know that you're lost. I mean, most people never think about, look here, I'm lost. But in all reality, if they don't know Christ, they are. We used to have the old saying, well, that guy is lost as a toad frog. Well, he's lost worse than the toad frog. The poor old toad frog, he never sinned. He just got in this mess. And they said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them that same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Well, it sounds like not only he got it, but his house got it too. Something had really happened. God was in the God. God was in this thing. God was in the prison. Well, when you got it, he was in the prison and Paul and Silas. He had his messengers right there to answer the question. Now, I want to because it said in verse thirty-three and was baptized, he and all his straight way. So, one of the first things that Paul done was that, you know, you need to be baptized. Okay? Well, they didn't say, well, what I got to be baptized for? What I got, what's the water got to do with it? Evidently, it wasn't no big question. Look here, if that's what I need, glory to God, let's get to the water. But now, let's look over here in action. We will going to read in Acts 2, 37, 38, and 39. And now, this is Peter, you know, the day of Pentecost. This is how this thing got started. Because Jesus told Peter, when thou art converted, you strengthen the brethren. And he's going to, Peter's going to tell them what happened. He said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is what you've seen today, but the prophet that he had way back there, now it's been manifested in us. And he said, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto the Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Uh-huh. Well, the old jailer said, what must I do to be saved? And here they're asking pretty much the same question. What shall I do? What shall we do here? 
Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to them that are far off. How far? Well, evidently we're still here. How far, how far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. So, what must I do? Now, now, let's go back to the question. What must I do to be saved? In verse 31, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him to the spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Okay, so here the man is asking Paul, well, we have people ask us sometimes the same thing. What must I do to be saved? Well, the, pro the program don't change. He spake unto him the word of the Lord. Well, you know, Let's just see, let's just suppose what Paul might have said. He took the old jailer. He said, Mr. Jailer, you know, here some years back, there was a man that come on this earth. He was, he, it, it was prophesied that he would be born of a virgin. And he said, a virgin did conceive and brought forth a son. And the angel told her, you would call his name Jesus. And his name... He would be the same as Emmanuel, which would be God with us. And oh, he was, a, he was a good man. He was a righteous man. He was a man without sin. But you know what? He was without sin, but he was to be the sacrifice for sin because nobody else could pay the price because everybody else was born in sin. And this man was born without sin. He was a sinless one. And he knew he'd come to this earth to take that away. And the, the re religious leaders hated him. And they finally got it so bad, they lied on him and had him crucified by the Roman government. And because of this crucifixion, he died, but he rose again. And he's living today to make a way for you if you want to take it. And that's, that's the program. And so he had to take, he had to take that jailer on a trip to Calvary. And he had to have, that jailer had to have a personal experience with Calvary. He had to realize that when, when Jesus died, he died. And when Jesus rose, he rose. And now that he was living in him. And it wasn't that he died for somebody else. It was that he died for that Philippian jailer because it is a personal identification between you and Christ. He didn't die for the world. He died for you if you can recognize that. Most people, they think, well, you know, Christ died and he paid the price. He died and He paid the price for you as an individual. You come to Him as an individual. You have to have a personal relationship with Christ. And if you go back and if you was to read the, all the epistles that Paul wrote because he was the main writer of the New Testament, you would find out that that's absolutely the truth. And when you do this, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. All these old things pass away, and all things become new, and you become Jesus Christ. Because it's now no more that you live, but it's Him that lives in you. Oh, no, that's... But that's... And evidently... And there's another thing. Now... It didn't say all the rest of the prisoners run over to Paul and said, Paul, uh, uh, evidently there was more because he was scared that they was all going to get away. And he said, man, if they get away, they'll kill me. 
you know, Philippi, uh, Philippi, 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 what? Philippian. Philippian. It's really Philippi. Well, but anyway, it was just a little colony of Rome. So it was still, in, everything was Rome, Rome. Yeah, because Rome was the charge of all, most all the world. So it was just a colony of Rome. And so they had the Roman rules and everything else. So anyway, all the other prisoners didn't run to Paul and say, Hey, Paul, what can we do to be saved? No, just this jailer did that. Well, why didn't the jailer do it and nobody else? Because he had a predestinated seed in him. He was just like the little woman at the well. She was in bad shape in every other way, low down, dirty, and that stinking and everything else. But inside of her was a seed. And when she met Jesus Christ and he told her what was in her heart, she said, Sir, you must be a prophet. And he said, I'm he that speaks to And she said, Glory to God, I see it. My well, how, how could she see it? And, and the priest, which was born in the right lineage, went to school and was a good man. And if he, he'd done anything, they would have stoned him. How come she seen it in her condition and he called him a devil? Huh. She was predestinated. And he was not. She was predestinated. And here, this jailer, here he is, evidently. You know, how did the, remember, the rich young ruler, oh, he come to Jesus, he said, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, keep the commandments. He said, oh my, he said, I've done that from my youth up. I've kept the commandments. I honor my mother and my father. Oh, Jesus said, that's one, but that's one thing you like. He said, go and sell what you got and come follow me. And he said, oh no. Well, he was looking for eternal life and it was standing before him, but the price for eternal life was too great and the price for eternal life is too great this morning. Oh, that can't turn loose of the world. Because if you're really true in your heart, you know once you follow Christ that all this worldly makeup and trash and everything else goes out the door. But most people, they say, well, you know, I, 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 I really like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you like that, you won't like this because it's not going to be over here. So that's the difference. So now, so he's telling the jailer what he has to do to be saved. And every evidently, the jailer has agreed. Don't you imagine? Now, we can tell by Paul's writings that he was pretty well long-winded. I mean, he preached one night so long that one of the fellows there fell off and about killed himself and had to go over to revive him. So I can, I can very well imagine that Paul gave him the whole story. And, and, and if he give him the whole story, it don't say that uh, the jailer, the jailer, he was wanting to know, he, he had got a revelation to it, that God, I'm lost. And here was, there was God's messengers there to give him the way. And he took that opportunity. Well, I tell you what, we need more jailers today. Because the messenger's here. The message is here. And it is the way of salvation. And it is Jesus Christ. Uh, no, well, <laughs> I don't need to be saved. I'm in church. Well, the, so what? But see, that's what people have come to. Oh, I go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you go to church every Sunday and you bring them one, just one little thing of the Word and they blow up like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the Word, the one that you're claiming that you got in your heart. 
And you, and you can't seem to identify yourself with Him. No, you identify yourself with some church creed. Some fable, some fantasy that the pastors told you. That's the difference. See, they're not going to tell them. They're, all, they're trying to tell them one way to keep them, to keep the house full. Well, why fill up the house with a bunch of unbelievers? Oh, it makes, I guess it makes them look real good on TV. They show these big crowds, just thousands of people sitting there going, uh. Oh. But, so Paul gave them the correct way. And did you notice, first thing that happened, they were baptized. And you know how Paul baptized. And that's another thing. How in the world could the devil pull that over on the religious world about being baptized in the titles of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost when there's not an example of it in the Bible anywhere? Even when Paul met the ones that had been baptized by John the Baptist, he said, uh oh, he said, he was baptized and unto repentance. Look here, the, the Christ has come and he's been done and now it's for remission. And, well, they didn't blow up. They just said, okay, let's get baptized. And then they received the Holy Ghost. I mean, it, it's... When, when you meet real, true believers, I mean, the Word just flows. It don't come to all these barricades, go, oh, blah, blah, blah. no, it just flows. Because it's going to where it's been predestinated to go. But when you get all these here, well, they get contentious and they get argumentative, you might as well just move on because He's not there because he's not going to reject his own word. Huh. So that's how he gave them the story, what must I do to be saved? He said, you have to believe in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is the word. And I'm telling you the word. We're traveling all through this area and we're giving Jesus Christ the word out. And when you accept him, you accept God because he is God and God is the word. I don't know how much more simpler it could be. He didn't come up with some kind of fantastic story or something. He just told them the truth. Now, so that's what must I do to be saved. So now, He's got, oh yeah, I want to touch one other thing here. Now people use this, this, this one here a lot. And he said, uh, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Well, how was his house saved? The same way he was saved. They had to accept what Paul was given. You think that they'll say, well, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. You think they could, they could have been included? No. So, yes, your house can be saved if your house believes like you do and if you're believing in Christ. That's how it works. And he said, now, And he took the same hour and washed and, 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 and he and all of his. So the whole house, they went and they all got baptized. So it, thank God, it was a family affair. Boy, I tell you what. Now you're talking about a family being in unity when they all get the revelation of Jesus Christ. And you ain't got to get up every morning and bull whip everybody to get them straightened up. Wouldn't that, be a, wouldn't that be almost paradise? Because in this life, you know you're going to have troubles and problems and everything else. <clears throat> so how would it be to a house that would be in unity, all serving Christ? Because he, Christ said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. That's what's wrong with this country today. It's divided. 
and it will not stand. Now, while we're right here, now this is in Christ is the mystery of God revealed. He said, what must I do to be saved? And his, his, Brother Brown, in this Christ is a mystery there in Jeffersonville, he said, now, what is the new birth? Well, what is the new birth? Oh, well, then you say, well, Brother Brown, what is the new birth? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ personally to you. Not that, well, when we got it as a group, no, if you got it, you got it personally. That's why we call him a personal Savior. It's Jesus Christ personally to you, the revelation. Amen. See, you've not joined the church. Uh-oh, well, I thought that's all I had to do was just join the church. Well, that's what they, they tell you. Just come, come in giant, sign your name, and everything's okay. You didn't join a church. You didn't shake a hand. You didn't do something. You didn't say a creed. You promised to live by a code of rules. But Christ the Bible, He is the Word that was revealed to you. He was the Word that was revealed to you. Not the Word that you memorized. Not the, no, he was the word that was revealed to you. Upon this rock I'll build my church. The revelation of Jesus Christ. And flesh and blood, Peter, didn't reveal this to you. But my father, who was his father, the Holy Ghost, has revealed this to you. Mm -hmm. And no matter what anybody says, what takes place is Christ. Pastor, priest, Whatever it might be, it's Christ in you that is the revelation that the church was built on. <clears throat> I made a statement the other day, and I said if this bunch of mixed multitude had been in the garden back at the beginning, they would have all brought flowers. Oh, yeah. That's right. People are, are willing, just like old Cain, their daddy, they, he was willing to bring a sacrifice, but he's going to bring what he thinks. He's going to bring what his carnal mind thinks it is. And that's what they do today. They're going to bring what their carnal mind thinks it is. Well, they don't have the mind of Christ. They don't have the revelation. Well, look, look, it wasn't written, well, Abel, you should bring this. No, it says, by faith, Abel. If you get it, it's going to be by faith. So that's what the church was built upon. Now, what must I do to be saved? Now, okay, so that's how you get to heaven. Well, let's see some of the things that's going to keep you out of heaven. Okay, let's look at Revelations. And I thought about this this morning, too, right off the bat. Revelations 21, 7. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable that's, you know, a bono is something that's filthy. And you know, a woman that puts on a garment, or a man that puts on a garment that pertains to a woman, vice versa, they are an abomination. And Brother Brown would give us the best uh, definition. He said it's like an old, dirty, stinking bathroom. Have you ever been in an old bathroom where they ain't cleaned it lately? And it's such a stench in there, you can't hardly even stay there to do your business. Well, that's what an abomination is, and that's what happens to a woman that puts on a garment that pertains to a man, or a man vice versa. And there's so much abomination going, and they ain't going to make it. If the Word of God is true, now, and the fearful and unbelieving, well, what are they unbelieving? No doubt, God's Word. 
and abominable and murderers and whoremongers. And I looked that word up this morning. And in the, the diet or in the lexicon there, and it said a whoremonger, a man. Well, I always thought a whoremonger was a man that run after whores. But look at here. It says, a man who prostitutes his body to another's lust for hire. Well, my, 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 that's, <laughs> that's current events in this day and age. Absolutely. We're in the revelation. We're in the back of the book. A man that prostitutes his body to another's lust for hire. A male prostitute. A man who indulges in unlawful sexual intercourse. A fornicator. That's what it is. And my well, we don't have to worry about it. They ain't going to make it. I don't care how many churches they go. I don't care how many churches accept them. It don't make no difference. The church is not the final word. Man, Ooh. let me get back over here in this thing. And whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. If this ain't the lioness generation you're ever coming with, they will stand right in your face and lie over and over. And you know that they're lying, and they know that they're lying, and they will lie. Why? Because that's the spirit that's in them. Their father was a liar at the beginning. Who told the first lie? The serpent, when he was inspired by Satan, he said, you'll surely not die. That's a lie. And so that's a lie on God. So, and all, now listen, all these folks, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone <clears throat> which is the second death. Oh my goodness, you bad enough to die one time, but you got to die twice? Huh. So we ain't going to have to be worried about them folks in heaven. But this is what they're not telling them. They're telling them this smooth, easy way, oh, you just come down front. And, and we'll, we'll give you the right hand of fellowship and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Remember all the crusades that Billy Graham had? Brother Graham said he had 30,000 one week and he come back two weeks later couldn't find 30. What happened to him? Huh. So, don't have to worry about them people. They're not going to make it. There's no way for them to make it. Now, let's look over here because... This is what will keep you out. We told you what will get you in. Christ's word when you accept Him. When you have a personal relationship with Christ. When you recognize that He died for you. So that He could come and live in you. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 Know ye not don't you know that the unrighteous <clears throat> shall not inherit the kingdom of God be not deceived neither fornicators What is a fornicator? Brother Brown said it's unclean living. It's unlawful sex. <laughs> Neither fornicators nor idolaters. This one time when I was out amongst, when I was working, this one brother, he was a, a big member of a big, one of these big churches. And he was saying one day, he said, you know, 
the people in the church that, that cause some of the biggest problems are the people that are living together that are not married. I said, I, mean, I said, you mean you've got people in your church that go to church as a couple that live together and they're not married? He said, yeah. And I, I, I couldn't believe that. But that's what he said. <clears throat> but neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers and the people say, oh, well, you know, I'm a daughter. That's a, that's a thing. But you know, a man that looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart? Well, yeah, well, why was he out committing adultery with her? Because she dressed herself in such a way that caused him to lust. And these women think, oh, well, uh, 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 well, she looks so sexy. And a woman that dresses herself to look sexy, you know what she's telling the men out there? Look here, I'm ready. I'm sexy. I'm enticing you for, for a purpose. Come on. But no, they think, well, I just want to look. Yeah, you want to look that way because you want somebody to look at you. And when he does and he lusts after you, you're an adulterer just like he is. I don't care. You say, well, I've never been touched by a man. You might not in your body, but your spirit has been and you're guilty. And what? There won't be no adulterers in heaven. No, no, no. You know, I was, I, was I was looking at the message this morning and I thought about the message that Brother Brown preached, the thinking man's filter. And God's got a filter. And look here, the only way you're going to get to heaven is you have to come through this filter. And when it says all these things, he meant it. So, look here. An adulterer is not going to heaven because God has got a remedy for all these things. Huh. It says now, uh oh, oh Lord, here we go again. He says, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate. Now you know who the effeminate is. That's these little sweet things that are around here, tiptoeing around men. So sissified and everything else. And you can, as soon as they walk out, you can identify them. They come tiptoeing around like some little sissy. Uh huh, well. I don't care what the, the government says. I don't care what the churches say. If they want to accept them, that's up to them. But God does not accept that. They're not going to make it. Hmm. <clears throat> Nor the effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Look here. Nor thieves. Let him that stole steal no more, because there's a remedy for that. Nor covenants, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Is that plain enough? They're not going to make it to heaven. But you said, well, Brother Dial, the, the people are sinners. They're born. They was born that way. They couldn't help it. That was their nature. They come here a liar to start with. Okay. I'll agree with that. But there, but there is a way to correct that. And that way is the new birth. All of those old things can be wiped out just as they never were. Oh, you say, how in the world? 
Because God is able to do it. God can take all that stuff and throw it, all your past, He just takes it and throws it in. That Brother Brown called his sea of forgetfulness never to be remembered no more. Now, that was 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Well, let's go a little bit further here. Now, let's go over here. Because he said the ones that does this could never inherit the kingdom of God. So let's go to verse 11 and look at here. The, the picture is going to really change. And such were some of you. Oh, well, all of these things he's named out. He's telling them and such were some of you. But, thank God there's a but there, but ye are washed. You're washed in the water by the Word. You've heard the Word. You've accepted Christ. You've become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. But ye are washed. Ye are sanctified. You've been claimed up. And the Holy Ghost is coming to you and put you in service for Christ. And you are justified. Now look at here. Brother Branham, I've never heard anybody say this before. But you can go look it up and it says the same thing. Justified means you are guilt free. And Brother Branham told us justified. Just as we never did it. Because the old thing that did it is gone. That old man, the Holy Ghost, that old man, that old soul, that old nature, the Holy Ghost has burnt him up. And now you are the nature of Christ. That's what the new birth does. And such were some of you, but you are washed, you are justified. And, and, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord and by His Spirit of God. Whew. Amen! Now, now you can get to heaven. Now there's a way. All of these things were keeping you from it, but now God has made the way. Calvary made the way when God died and paid the price, the one that we should have paid and couldn't, He come and paid it Himself. And He became us, the sinner, that we could become Him, the sinless. He that's born of God does not commit sin. I don't care what the church says or what the politician says or what the theologian says. They ain't got one thing to do with it. Hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Man, you'd think that everybody would want this. But no, they don't want it. Uh, 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 uh. They stop their ears. Now, let's look at Romans 8 and 8. So, Romans 8, 8. So then, them that are in the flesh cannot please God. And in, in that over in Hebrews, it says, without faith it is impossible to please God. And faith is a revelation, and revelation comes direct from God. But, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But listen, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And if the Spirit of God is dwelling in you, that means you've had a new birth. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You cannot go to heaven. Well, Brother Dobbs, I, I joined the biggest church in town. That's good. I pay my tithe. Oh, that's wonderful. 
I live a good, clean life. That's great. But without Christ, all of that's in vain. Oh, that's wonderful to do all these things. And that's what a lot of people are, are dependent. Oh, oh, I, I give the charity. The, I, 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 you know, I give my body to be burned. Big deal. That's great. Maybe a, science can use it. But that's not going to get you in. You only get in by accepting what Jesus Christ has done and let Him come in and live your life. Hmm. Now, let's get over here in some of the in the message here, because we're talking about what must I do to be saved. And we're talking about uh, the, the preachers all preach a way to get into heaven, but they won't tell you what keeps you out of heaven. Well, we just found out, and it's <laughs> to this world, to this twenty first century, it's just everyday living. Thank you, Man Spooler, there in Jeffersonville, 1965. Not disregarding anybody. I never speak personally about any person, but it's sin in the church. You bear me record of that. I didn't say Miss So and so is Miss So and so or Mr. So and so or Reverend So and so. No, sir. I say sin is sin, and if it's in my family or if it's in me, if it's in whoever it is, it's still sin. Not as an individual. I don't speak against individuals. I speak against sin. And I don't care if it's me or whoever it is. It starts through God's filter. Any sin will stop right there. And he's talking about God's filter is this holy Bible. And you can't get it through here. It stops it. He said we're talking about what is sin? It's unbelief. <clears throat> so it stops right there. Now, let's go on in this thinking man. He said, leave the world's denomination, religious pack. Let it lay like a, a, a cigarette pack in the woods. Let it rot and decay. It's wrong. Uh-oh, this is, <laughs> denomination is the wrong filter. Because what? Just about anything they'll let filter through there. Well, just go, look here, just go peek your head into the one of the nominal churches and you will see what the, their filter allows to come through there. <clears throat> and, now, and it said, take the word, which is Christ, that gives you and reaches and preserves that taste of eternal life to everyone that will take it, eternal life. The word, if you are predestinated, you see it. Glory to God. Amen. Brother Branham, if you're predestinated, you see it. That's, I mean, that's, if you're predestinated, that's all you can see. When it strikes you, that's all you can see. If you're predestinated, you see it. There's no way to hide it from you. You look. And there and say, why? Wow, it's just so plain before my face. I look at it. There it is. I'm looking right at it. I see it. And here it is. The Word. Every word. Just word by word. Living out. <clears throat> then there's a taste of eternal life that you want. And when you breathe through that, what come through? That's God's filter. Nothing but the Spirit. No world at all. All, no unbelief at all. God's filter. And when you breathe that, there's nothing can get through but the Holy Ghost. But they don't want God's filter. They proved it. You try to give them, give them the filter, the filter that that only lets in <laughs> eternal life. No. You know, there's so much today about oh that this world is so uh it's so Filthy that everybody's got to have a you got to have a filter in your car and you got to have one here you got to have one in your house you got to have a filter everywhere and and people spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on all these filters and the one that God gives free they pay no attention to it it just shows that they have no desire for God's filter 
they want every other kind of filter. Now, let's look over here in the third Exodus there in Jeffersonville in 1963. And the natural eye today sees a glamorous church of fellowship with the mayor of the city or what more and these denominations, the organization, and they fail, they fail to see the power of the Holy Spirit when it can raise the dead and heal the sick and how. Oh, they say, look, watch Hollywood and watch this people on the street. The women today think, well, this woman, Susie, she belongs to church and she's got her hair bobbed. Uh-oh, Susie belongs to church and her hair's <clears throat> Bob. You know, I just put in, in the message search this morning from 1963 on, I put in there bobbed hair and it popped up 61 times. That's after the seals, after the revelation of Jesus Christ. Look here. A woman with bobbed hair is not going to make it. Okay, whoa, let me see here. But well, well, this woman, Sue, she belongs to church. Yeah, no doubt about it. She's got her hair bobbed. She wears makeup. Everybody in town likes her. I wonder about heaven. You think heaven likes her when she's contrary to the word? When heaven consists of the word? Look here, if she got there, she'd be like that man that come in without the garment on. I wonder about heaven, see, when it's contrary to the word. God can endorse it. He wouldn't endorse it anything against himself he would be denying his own word and it and be it known God will never do that though the heavens and earth pass away now listen this is the prophet vindicated by God for this day they won't tell them what will keep them out of heaven a bobbed haired woman is a curse in the sight of God. Oh, well, look at here. I look out and I see a lot of curse going on. And it's so simple. Or a woman that will put on a garment that pertains to a man. Well, that's about all they wear. Now they got, and I was thinking the other day, well, they named it right. About all you can see these women in nowadays is what they call, and they call them, I didn't call them, this is what they call them, yoga pants. Well, if it's a pant, that means it, it's a garment that pertains to a man. But a, <laughs> I don't believe a man would put on one of them things. And, I, 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 and they sure shouldn't. I made the comment one time that the women used to wear their stockings under the dress. And now they wear the stockings, their yoga pants, instead of the dress. And as far as they're, they should, I mean, they're just naked in a different color. But, oh, no. And I see, I, I mean, it don't make no difference. Eight years old or 80 years old. That is the dress. Because the world says that's fine. Okay, well, the world said it's fine, but heaven says no, no, no. Huh. See, the spiritual eye catches it. They live for the hereafter. These people are living for the here and now. Oh, oh boy, this makes make me feel so good. I look so good. I look so sexy. They can see every, every, they can see every curve I got. The natural mind lives to reason the carnal things of the day. And that's what it is. It's a natural carnal mind. And this natural carnal mind is trying to preach to you how to, get, how to get to heaven. God's 
right away for this day, Bakersfield, 1964. Now, there has been all kinds of ministries. God, in the last days, I believe, has given us everything that he has got in his book. Amen, Brother Brown. Everything that he's promised, we've seen, and still, it seems like the people can't grasp it. I, I, amen, Brother Brown. I don't care how simple, I don't care how, how much, I don't care, they cannot grasp it. Okay? Those who are ordained to grasp it will grasp it. Amen, I'm one of them. I was ordained to grasp. It wasn't because I was smart, because I don't claim to be smart. Just a, what you call an average Joe out here. No, I don't want to say average Joe, because I know, no, that's a bad combination. Just an average fellow. Just an average man. But see, there's ones, they can't grasp because they don't have nothing to grasp with. It would be like a man, you cut his hands off and he was trying to, trying to get something. He can't get it because he has nothing to get it with. But look at here, we, we're, we've been ordained and, and we'll grasp it only those it blinds one and opens the eyes of another. Remember, we believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is not dead, but he's alive forevermore. He's here tonight. We are in his presence. He is here this morning because he's here. He never left. Tonight, he is here to confirm and make good any promise that he made for this day. And he is, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, anything that he was, he is tonight. So, let us believe him now as we read the word and speak to him. Amen. Let us believe him as we read the word and speak to him. How about a guy here in Jeffersonville, 1962? That's what the people say today. Oh, now wait. You don't, don't, do you don't believe now? Oh, uh, I go to church and I pay my tithes and I do this and the other and God is, and God is going to cast me down there. Unless a man's born again, he'll not even understand the kingdom of God. Where did you got that from? Well, you go back and read John 3, 3 and you'll find out. See, no excuses. Well, the poor old man, the poor, now look here. This is what people think. Well, the poor old man, the poor old woman, there's a good old soul. The only way they can ever see God is to be born again. That's all. I don't care how little, how old, how young, what they did, how much they went to church, how many denominations they know, how much creed they could recite, you've got to be born again or you're not even on the foundation to begin. So you see, you need a guide. He will guide you to the truth and the truth is the word. He will guide you and always has been. God never had to change nothing because he's infinite and he knows what's best. He's on the present. He's on mission. He's everything is right and God is so he don't have to change. Well, praise the Lord for that. How about it? He come and say, well, you know, I've done this. No, he's not going to do that. No, they do that all the time. Why? Because they changed their doctrine. Well, you know, we found more. Oh, well, yeah. uh, no doubt you did. But not him. Now, <clears throat> there's one here in the, the token. And Brother Brown preached the token many, many times. And he told us what the token was. He said the token is shows that the price has been paid and the price was paid at Calvary and he said the blood he said all that blood he said there wasn't enough blood to come out but he said it wasn't the blood it was a life that was in the blood and that life was the very life of God that has come back on us the worshiper which is the Holy Ghost which lives inside of us and that's the ones that wipes everything away. The ones that makes you a new creature. And you display that token. What it is it? It's the very life, the Word of God. Jesus Christ on you. 
Mm. But he said, now we rise up. The Holy Spirit is, is there to give us the token, eternal token written across your heart. So make up mind, body, everything, and you are a separated person from unbelief, separated person from the things of the world. You're separated from death. You're separated from everything, and you are a product that God has sealed into the kingdom by His Holy Spirit. Oh, how do I get to heaven? Well, there it is right there. Display the token. And he said, goes on, he said, no devil, no sickness, no death, no sorrow, no nothing can bother you as long as you hold that token over it. Amen. The unchanging faith pulsates that and, and forms a form of Jesus Christ, the image that you're walking in today. And when I see the token, I'll pass over you. Praise God for the token. Well, he paid the price and now I hold the token. It shows that the fare has been paid. But most people, they can't seem to grasp that. They want to do something. Well, have I done this? Yeah, you've you done that. Now, about Jesus arose in Chicago there in 1956. This wonderful Easter morning, Jesus was alive and among the people. What a type it is today that being on Easter again, Jesus is risen from the dead. And as he went about, many of his dear people who loved him, people who believed in him, didn't know that he was alive. And so is it today. There are many good-hearted Christian, honest-hearted Christian People who doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is alive and amongst us today, they fail to recognize that. They believe, oh, he died for my sins. They accept that and he rose again and he's up in heaven somewhere, but he isn't. He's right here on earth in the form of the Holy Ghost. I'll be with you even in you to the end of of the world not I'll be up in heaven looking down I'll be with you oh yes let's put him here they got him over I don't know where they got him but he's here he's living in his body he's living in his people he's living in his people he's living in the ones that he come to get that he predestinated and they saw it and they are him now Listen to this. This is in question and answers there in Jeffersonville, 1964. Now, that's your birth past, what you are. A natural man or a natural woman, but when you're reborn again, that's not the outside conscience. The outside is what you see, taste, feel, smell, and hear. But the inside of that is what you really are. Now, this out here, Satan just tempts you and knocks you around every way. But down in here, you can't do it unless you let him do it. For in here, you've got faith. And faith don't come from the outer conscience. It reason, but faith, but in faith, there's no reason. So, when you get there, you'll be like Abraham. And you got it from God, and you know it's there. I don't care how much it looks like it's wrong. You still know it's right. It's thus saith the Lord, and there's nothing going to bother you. Nothing can bother that. It's moving right straight on. Difficulty means nothing to it. It wades right on through it, for it's the Word, and the Word, the sword, and the Word cuts. The sword cuts itself free from everything else. You see, it takes the hand of faith to hold that word. Amen. And that's what it's all about. And here, there's one here in it. You must be born again. 1961 Jeffersonville. And this is very important here. Very important. And he's talking about shortcuts. Shortcuts. Tonight, shortcuts. Tonight, they're out here today and they're going on, oh my, and tomorrow they want to preach. Pentecostal people letting them do that too, yeah. 
They want a shortcut to heaven. Hallelujah. All I have to do is get down here and I just think nothing at all and say hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, <laughs> I've been there. And I got Elijah's garment. I'm going out tomorrow and cast out devils. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I got it. Praise God. Here I go. <laughs> Amen, Brother Bradham. Praise the heat evidently. Mm. Praise God, here I go. And they want a shortcut to heaven. That's what everybody's looking for. Shortcut to heaven. Taking as much, uh oh, taking as much of the world as they can take. You can't take any of it. There's no shortcuts. You come the way of Calvary. That's where you have to start. You have to start at Calvary. You come the way of the brass altar. You come the way of the brazen serpent. You die. You actually die. Oh God, why can't I say it right? You die, literally die to yourselves, die to the things of the world, and are born anew. Amen. No world in the things of the world is dead. There's no shortcuts. See? They want to come right quick. They don't want to grow. We grow in the Lord, and it takes growth and experience. I asked somebody a question one time. I said, you think Brother Branham knew more in 1933 than he did in 1963? Well, of course not. That was 30 years of growth ministry with God leading and guiding and revealing all the way. Well, your life is the same way. You come in like a little babe and you have to learn to crawl and to walk and to run and so on and so on. It's a growth and then look here, you don't never stop growing in this. You grow yourself until one day you grow yourself into another dimension somewhere. When you stop growing, you're stunted. Something means you're not getting any nourishment of something. And I see a bunch of stunning people. Look here, they come and got their name on the book, and that was it. They didn't go no further. Well, you know what? I was eight years old, and I accepted Christ. And, okay. And, and that means I'm in. Because they told me I was eternally secure. Whew. No shortcuts. There's no quick you have to come to Christ. And then He starts you off, leading you step by step all the way. Now, I want to close with this here. On the wings of a snow white dove, there in Shreveport, 1965. Have faith, all of you pray with us. Now, this is not a line of discernment, no, because He's just going to lay hands on the sick. He said, now, depression, fear, I know what this. Poor little thing. She said she's never seen peace in life. The same thing that I. Can't sleep. Nervous. Tension. Dear God, bear me record, Lord, that I've told the truth. How I feel for this little woman. I pray, God, that you'll send to her tonight that streak of faith from above that knows that you are obligated to your word and you keep every word. May the God of heaven take this fear from my sister and I obey you by laying my hands upon her and condemning it in the name of Jesus Christ. May it come out of her. Amen. Now look, sister, you believe me now, if you can start from right here by the cross from this night, deny you got it, see, go on saying, I haven't got it no more, then it will leave you. See, there's something that we have to do. Oh, they won't, well, this, this God does everything. He does. But there's something we have to we have to we have to believe we have to testify, and that was the thing that the people never talked about. Brother Brown's healing. He said, "Go 
and testify what God has done for you. And like the old man that come through the, that had lost his sight and he come through the line and 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 directly he, he come through the line and Brother Brown said, What are you doing here? He said, I prayed for you and you said you believed. He said, It's already finished. And and evidently, boom, the light went off in his head. And he went around and started to testify. The Lord has healed me, the Lord has healed me. And one day he was out there testifying and his eyes flew open. See? But most people, they're not looking for a healing. They're looking for a miracle. Oh, well, anybody could take a miracle. Boom, it's over. Well, sometimes it don't come like that. Most time it don't come like that. It comes when you hold on. You've got faith and you hold on to what? You hold on to what God has told you in His Word. Whew. Amen. What must I do to be saved? Well, look here, we told the whole story. We told what it takes to get to heaven and what will keep you out of heaven. And now it's up to the people. If you want to get to heaven, there's only one way. And the only one way is Jesus Christ, and He is the Word. And man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that, that comes out of the very mouth of God. So when you bypass one, uh-oh, you can't get there like that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for making it so simple. Thank you, Lord, for the new birth that takes all that old stuff and puts it away to never be remembered again. Make us clean, pure, the unadulterated, very pure wife of Christ without spot, ring, or blemish, or anything else. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this, this salvation, Lord. That, oh, Lord, when we think about the price that it costs, Lord, that you had to become a man with the purpose to be born without sin, to take away sin. And the only way you could do that, you had to die. And Lord, what a death it was. <laughs> they didn't cut you any slack whatsoever. They tried to kill you before they got you on the cross. But Lord, you done it. You was like that lamb. You never opened your mouth. The only thing you said, that it's finished. And it was, Lord. That was an eternal sacrifice. And it's over. And Lord, when we accept that, and how can we accept that without accepting all of it, the word that goes with it. So Lord, we thank you that you made it available this day. So simple. Lord, you sent us a simple message with a simple message and all we have to do is believe it and we're safe and secure in Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for every blessing, Lord. Thank you for the people that will hear this message. May they be able to grasp it, Lord. Take hold of it and take it into their heart and reap the rewards of the Word. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.